So we have time for a few questions. If you would, please come to the microphone. Um, while, we're, while we're waiting for folks to come up, just a quick thank you to ALA for hosting this session. They, we, we're doing this at the invitation of ALA. This is part of their News You Can Use series. They are taping the audio for this and will publish it. OCLC is, is doing a videotape, with, uh, so we'll publish that and our slides will go up. Are there questions? Steve, jump up. Come we on. talked really fast just so you could ask questions. <laughs> So I'm always really interested in open data, and I was wondering, in that enhancement piece of uh, your talk, Jeff, how much of the new identifiers introduced and in that kind of data is coming out in the public link data that's being made? Um, I don't actually, I, I'm not aware of how much is or is not. Um, I know that uh, the, the way it's stored, I don't think we're actually putting it back into the MARC record itself. Um, but I would defer to someone, uh, someone else. I could certainly get the answer. I'd defer to someone like uh, maybe John Chapman. <laughs> so the, the response was, we'll have to get back to you. Well, I, let me just say that OCLC is represented on the PCC um, committee, you know, on they're investigating how to insert identifiers and mark records. Both Robert Bremer from the production side of the house, quality assurance, you know, he's done a lot of enhancements to WorldCat on his own as part of the quality assurance team. And she, uh, Godby from OCLC Research are both represented. So I think the idea is they're working together so that there's a consensus in the community about how that's done. And then OCLC will have specs basically on how to implement that. Is that a good answer, John? <laughs> okay. Um, for Jeff, one of the sources you cite is WorldCat data. WorldCat data has some access point marked as controlled because somebody has looked at them or a machine with sensitive algorithms has looked. Is that a factor in evaluating the, the, the usefulness and the trustworthiness of that piece of information as a relationship? Yeah, so not only is it um, valuable for the, the ranking or the, the confidence, but it's also extremely valuable for um, our, our algorithms to be able to accurately make a match between that heading and then uh, a, a URI or an identifier in a controlled vocabulary. Um, because otherwise, if you don't know, if it's not flagged as coming from LCSH or LCNAF, you're just kind of spitballing and just trying to string match, which um, is not the most useful thing in the world. I think we can safely say that anything that relies only on text matching gets a much lower competence score. And I just wanted to add what the, the things that Karen uh, was talking that was talking about, and also Jeff, are ways of um, becoming uh, having the library as um, in the life of the user because we're doing things behind the scenes and linking these data. So we talked about fragmentation. Um, co uh, content silos. So I think all of these things demonstrate what we as librarians can do. So we'd like to thank everyone for their uh, kind attendance. And I'll leave you with one question. Why does the band Boston only have presence in one authority file, the US authority file? This is, this is a very lonely uh, VOF record out there. Okay, thank you very much, everyone.